back here on the Cover 3 podcast. Uh, but there's already like so much good content you were able to capture. I know we've still got, you know, even more that's going to be um, coming out sort of detailing what we what you saw and some of the big takeaways from Elite 11. So I'll, I'll let you just grab the wheel here. Um, you know, where, where do you want to start? Yeah, so uh, I, I think we need to start with with three guys who have really, in my mind, special upside. OK, mm -hmm. so I, I don't know that the 25 quarterback recruiting class has a whole lot of guys who are like crazy polished and crazy toolsy. But I definitely see guys who, if they hit, the ceilings are are those of, of high draft picks, right? They're, they're maybe just a little bit further away uh, than like, like a, you know, a Nico or an Arch were in, in, in comparison to a, a recent class of, of which we like the prospects a lot or, or an Arnold or, or, or somebody like that. Um, let's go ahead and start with the guy that Elite 11 named as the winner. Uh, we, we went with Taven Sinclair, but uh, Elite 11 went with uh, Keelan Russell. Honestly, it was very neck and neck for us as well with, with Ivans and Coop and, and Biggins deciding it. Uh, let's go ahead and, and roll the tape there on, on Keelan Russell. Kid, out of Texas, uh, we first saw him at, well, I, I first saw him at Battle Miami uh, when he was committed to SMU. I had visited SMU because my wife and I went, went to Dallas for a country concert, and uh, they, they knew that this kid was the goods and that it was going to be a battle uh, to hold on to him. Really accomplished as a high school starter. Now, he basically said that his NFL comp was like Lamar Jackson, but also really good at passing. And I'm like, that's that's ambitious. But, dude, like the performance out there was really strong. His high school numbers have been good, like high, high completion percentage. He is a really nice playmaker uh, with his legs. But I think the the high level throws that he made at the event, both at seven on seven and, and some of the throws he made on the pro day uh, were, were really damn impressive. And it's like, OK, yeah, like let's let's stamp this dude, by the way. Uh, on day two and day three, they have just like guys who are going to be going pro and something other than sports running these routes. If you guys are watching <laughs> YouTube, well, on night one we had like legit five star prospects out there. Uh, a lot of these dudes are not as fast as like you would expect them to be, and they're not used to this velocity like at all. So uh, Keelan had I think three or four <laughs> touchdown drops in in like maybe a thirty throw period uh, coming up. So anyway, I, he had a really nice day. Uh, made a bunch of high level throws, and it was just we knew he could make plays with his legs. Some like of these we knew that like he was running those routes. Yeah, like a really accomplished guy, uh, but also like the high level throws that he was asked to make and did make uh, were were pretty impressive. So it's like, yeah, Bama fans, I think you should be really happy that you got Keelan Russell. This it's funny, like you mentioned, the kid says he's like Lamar Jackson, but a better passer. It's it's funny because you hear like the kids say those things and you laugh at him. You're like, really? But at the same time, good. That's how I want him to think about himself. Yeah. That's what I want him. Those are the expectations I want my quarterback putting on himself. I want that kind of confidence. So I think that's a good thing, even if it is. All right, we'll see, buddy. But sure. I mean, and, and it wasn't like in a disrespectful. But I, 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 I was gonna say, it sounds yeah. disrespectful. Yeah. Lamar Jackson's well, a good passer. I, I'm I'm prompting him, be like, hey, like. For folks who haven't seen you, who's your NFL comp for mm -hmm. a bunch of videos that we do? And he's like, oh, Lamar Jackson, um, but also like a really good passer. And we're talking like what their best ratings will be in EA. And he's like, oh, uh, speed 90, um, you know, throw power 98. I think it was just, you know, <laughs> okay. So that's, uh, uh, and then uh, he also thinks they're going to ding him on his ball security because he's like mobile quarterbacks get dinged on the ball security by the ratings. So he wants to know that he's a, he's not a fumbler. The whoopsie daisy so. rate. Yeah, did he have anything to say about um, Kalen DeBoer or you know the the offensive coaching staff and the yeah. sort of the way that that process has gone? So it wasn't like stick a microphone in his face and ask him about that because I, I was just really doing more social content shorts. But he did take note of what DeBoer did with Penix and and it was really really impressed uh, by that. I know he also had a pretty long interview. You guys can watch, I believe, on Bama two four seven uh, with Tom Loy, uh, who's our one of our national guys on the 24 seven side. So he was pretty impressed with what DeBoer had done with Penix. He, he, you know, he's grabbing the mic after the event and talking to all these, all these receivers. Hey, like come play with me. I just want to lead 11 and let, let's, let's come play in this offense. Everybody gets drafted. So it was, uh, um, it, it was cool to watch. And like, just a, I would say like almost none of these kids were like, just none of them acted like idiots. You know, it's like, okay. Like they handled the moment and you should, right? Like it's, it's, there's no reason for anybody to act, act like a dummy. Uh, and none of them did. So that's uh, cool. You mentioned Tavian St. Clair was was would would have been y'all's pick. Um, so what what stood out about him as again, I'm I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh, Alabama and Ohio State have the best uh quarterback recruits. Okay, yeah, this is yeah. really 
we're really going to have a lot of parity college football moving forward. So this is back to back uh, Alabama commit at the time Elite Eleven MVPs because Julian Sayan won last mm-hmm. year, uh, and then Sayan of course flipped to Ohio State via transfer once Bill O'Brien left Alabama for Ohio State and or you know went to Ohio State anyway. Um, Tavis St. Clair is he looks like if Dylan Raiola was ripped. Okay, like the, the, that same type of build. Like, oh, that's a college player already. You can see him. Like this guy oh, he's is thick. Is, that guy's he, a tight yeah. end. He, yeah, dude. I'm telling you, like he's going to be very difficult to bring down. Good pocket mobility. Um, has the ability to make all of the throws. I think he scored pretty well in the pro day. Um, he operated seven on. Okay. It's also important. Like you have to understand some of the nuance here. Some of these guys play competitive seven on like every single weekend. You know, and some of these dudes based on playing other sports or in some states, they just don't really, unless they're not allowed to, but like it's it's not really encouraged to play a lot of seven on. Like not a lot of Ohio kids play a ton of seven on, which is where he's from. So, you know, wa- watching St. Clair, like I kind of grade his seven on a little bit of a curve, right? Um, because I had seen him play at OT7 in Orlando and I was not super impressed with the seven on work and he was better uh, at Elite 11 with it, but can make all the throws, big guy, like the, the motion's smooth. There's not like some weird little hitch going on. He could change arm angles, good balance. It just it's what you want. Like, oh, you look like a college junior. Awesome. And you don't have any weird like throwing motion stuff that we really have to clean up. And they try to challenge these guys. Like, look, like they're throwing bags at them and, and, and make them jump around. And it's just, you know, who can kind of handle it? Who can make all the throws that you need? because uh, a lot of these high school offenses, they don't ask much of you. Right? Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, just you know, especially if you can run, like the defense is so focused on your legs, a lot of it's just short stuff. How tall is he? Six three, six three and a half, I would say. So he's like 222. He looks like a man. Yeah. 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 And he's what 17, 16? Uh 17. Yeah, I don't think he's a holdback. Right. He's definitely not 16. Christ. Yeah. Um That's a man. <laughs> all right. So Notre Dame has a really good quarterback room right now. Uh, you know, CJ Carr right there as a freshman. Yeah. Uh, what what'd you think about Deuce Knight, who's gonna be coming up behind him? So Deuce Knight, dude from Mississippi, uh, the, the lefty in this group, he is like special upside, man. Um, we, we've known about the running, and, and I like Elite 11 is not about running, but it is important to discuss it a little bit here. Two weeks ago at OT7, one of the teams decided to blitz him, and you can blitz an OT7-7 seven, seven on I was like, oh, that's probably not real smart. And in my brain, I think those of us of a certain age have the whole, you know, Vince Young scores uh, going on in the background as he – he just strided on these dudes. Like he's like probably, you know, he's, he's the tallest out there. Long strides. It's, it's, it's easy velocity with the legs. But what I've been impressed with is how much better he's gotten as a passer. Uh, he actually wasn't the best I've seen him be at, at, at elite 11. Um, I had seen him at a couple OT sevens and a couple seven ons throughout the summer. I was like, man, I want to see the consistency. And then two weeks ago at OT seven, he finally put it all together and had like three days back to back to back where he was, he always makes high level throws but he was making his layups, right? And that's what I wanted to see. I'm like, I don't want to see the stuff where we're having accuracy problems on kind of the short and intermediate stuff. Just hit the open dudes because you're going to have a lot of open dudes with how big of a threat your legs are. And then he went out and like the former NFL quarterbacks out there were like, holy cow, like with, with some of these deep balls that he threw, like that's a pretty Ooh. nice one. Oh, drop catch that. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and they're like, that's, he was making some throws that I, I was talking to, um, Oh, Sullivan, who, who runs, uh, you know, QB school on, on the YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. There's some NFL guys that don't make these throws. Now, the consistency going to need to be better, right? Like he wasn't great in seven on seven this time, but I am very encouraged by the progression that he's shown year to year. We're going to need to see him put it together, you know, on the on the high school stage come this fall. Uh, but like I would say as far as if I was running a collective, right, or like a front office for a team. I think the three guys out there at Elite 11 that I would I would drop the bag for if I had a chance to land them. Like if, if my staff had done a good enough job to have me in position, like relationship wise, fit wise, coaching wise, like the three guys I would I would bag drop for, right? Russell, St. Clair, and Knight. Because I would feel like an idiot if they hit and I didn't decide to pay up for it. You know, like those I think those three have a different ceiling than the others. Doesn't mean they'll hit it, but right. You know, all right, one question before we get a little bit further down the list. Um, where was Bryce Underwood? 
So Bryce Underwood, who's the number one overall player, uh, did not participate. I don't believe he went to a regional, but he was not uh, not on the list. Um, and Tennessee's commit also, I believe, had a a bad thumb injury that required stitches. So he did not uh, uh, participate. But uh, no Underwood out there, which would have been cool to compare him. You know, like I've seen Underwood a good bet in person, but, you know, it's nice to kind of stack everybody at the uh, at, at the same stage. Yeah, Underwood committed to LSU right now. Yeah. And... 2025 class that's losing a couple of uh notable mm -hmm. guys here through this june um all right so well, let me say let me throw this at you real quick uh underwood russell st Clair, knight do you feel like all four of those guys are pretty locked in you don't see any changes between now and december i mean i, I think old miss will will continue to try to make a run at do Deuce Knight, right like he's, he's the in-state kid uh but I think Notre Dame has done a great job with the relationships. He said all the right things about the Irish. You know, Tom Tom Loy had him there uh, for for an interview, and he you know seemed to really be in to Notre Dame. Uh, you know, seems like a kid who also really values the academics that the Irish have. So, I, I don't think it's just some inevitability that he flips to Ole Miss. But I, if I'm Ole Miss, I'm going to continue to try. Man, I guess I, nothing, not, nothing like. Um nothing hits the, the the senses quite like a nerd who's good you know <laughs> yes yeah. yes we got this it's our time right. let's go uh all right who else take take us wherever you want what are some of the other names that stood out um for various reasons all right uh, i think my favorite fit is Hassan longstreet okay. um, kid from california he's committed to texas a&m so this guy is twitched up he's jacked he's got the ability to make all, all, all the throws um it's I don't want to call it herky jerky, but there is a little bit of that in the motion. But I mean, dude, he's he's pretty damn good. And from a, a mobility and ability to to play fast and threaten the defense with his arm and his legs, I just absolutely love that fit that he has with Colin Klein. Like, think about what Colin Klein, Klein ran there when he was Kansas State's offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. That's who Texas A&M hired to be their offensive coordinator now. And I also like this dude. Man, he cares about competing. His, his toe was pretty jacked up at this event. You can actually see it here on the film. Like, it's taped, and um, I had a source at Elite 11 say, like, hey, man, don't, don't do anything day one because day one is really, really, like, workload heavy. Just come out and do the pro day and do the seven-on so you can get through this. And he was like, nah, screw that. I, I'm, I'm a competitor. I'm going to tape up and go. Gamer. And he did, man. And, and Let's go. Uh, I, I think he's a lot more athletic when his, you know, foot or toe or whatever is all jacked up. But – uh, he had a really nice week too. So I, I was very impressed with what Longstreet did. I think if you're an a and fan, you got to love the fit, man. It, it, it's, he's, he's pretty damn good and, and kind of right there on, on that edge. Nice. Um, who else? Uh, two more names to watch here. So I think Maryland is in pole position with this quarterback named Malik Washington, who's, you know, in, in their backyard. I was very impressed with him, dude. Like, like his, his, progression was nice his accuracy was on point he is a guy who can run around if you need him to but you know he's trying to be pass first he had a very strong week and, and if you're maryland man things are looking up like if you're able to get this kid and able to hold on to him you're not stuck in the big 10 east anymore which is uh just means you got a couple more winnable games and um you know to go from having talia uh to to you know to go to go to have Malik washington i think it'd be pretty impressed like like good velo uh, the motion is fairly clean, and there's a lot to work with there. So I, I, I was uh, I was impressed, and he got better as the week wore on. I thought too. So yeah, um, we'll have uh, MJ Morris for Maryland this year, but the rest of that room is kind of there for the taking, right? Yeah. Uh, one more kid. Well, actually, maybe a couple more. But so Camario Taylor is a dude committed to Mississippi State, and he missed most of his sophomore year with a ankle fracture. So we did not see a whole lot of him as a sophomore. He had a nice junior year and, and led, led the team uh, to, I believe, a state title appearance there. Um, if you could see him, he also is in the looks like a college junior category right now on, on the screen. This is probably mm -hmm. one of the episodes you should watch on YouTube, but we always appreciate all of our five-star listeners on the podcast side. He got so much better as the week got like went on and, and like how much more comfortable he got. Night one, I thought he struggled a little bit, just kind of kind of figured it out. Night two, some struggles, but got better. And then he came close to throwing seven touchdowns and seven on and made like high-level throws and just ripping the ball. And it was into the wind. And it was the last group. So like everybody was tired. Damn. Okay. Like this is 
this is some serious juice he has. And, and if I'm Mississippi State, I'm like, okay, <clears throat> collective, I'm going to need you to uh, really plan ahead here. We're going to need some, some financial planning because if he keeps progressing and like goes big time senior year, I, I know there's a lot to work on in the game. But, man, I, I was very impressed with the upside that he has. And also, he's a dude who really can hurt you with the legs as well. Like There's some Dak Prescott vibes there for Mississippi State fans. And I know a lot of teams that are – Continuing to monitor this situation closely, uh, and we'll probably <laughs> continue to uh, yeah. Gold him bars, down the stretch. Costco gold bars ain't going to cut it. That, yeah, we're, we're going to need to we're gonna need to put together something uh, substantial to be able to keep everybody else uh, at bay. I'm looking um, at that kid, and I want to put like 40 pounds on him and put him on the edge, dude. Yeah, he he looks like a college tight end. Yeah. yeah um, it, is that the, I mean, we're just seeing this again, a great episode to watch youtube.com slash cover three. We're, we're getting good looks at all these guys. Have you sensed that? And you've been to a lot of these camps. You followed this. And are, are we just sort of building more towards that type where the, the tight end sized quarterback is no longer um, strange to see? Cause they just, m most of them are looking like that. So I think it's, it's, as we mentioned at the beginning of this elite 11 show, your biggest tool guys this year are like big dudes who can run, who have big arms, but they're still kind of figuring it out in some ways, right? Keelan's tall, but he's not wide. Yeah, um, I agree. But like, like St. Clair is big. You know, Deuce is wider than Keelan, and he's also taller. Um, you know, Hassan, as you saw, is is pretty jacked, big. And then you have there's some other guys in this class who are not. I think like the frame is more limited. But the polish is higher. And to me, there was a real kind of bifurcation. It's like, all right, smaller guys who I can win with them. It's sort of like, okay, would I break the bank for Kirk Cousins? No. Can I win with him? Yes. You know, they're sort of like win because guys and win with guys. You know, I, I would put Jordan's or uh, Jordan's Ryan Montgomery in a sort of like win with category. I think Florida State's Tramel Jones, if he sticks, is in that win with category. You know, KJ Lacey committed to Texas. You know, very small kid, uh, but great balance much better arm than you think he would have, can throw from multiple angles. So he's sort of a win with. Luke Nickel committed to Miami. I think it's a win with as well. Uh, but in my head, I was kind of I was kind of classified. I was like, all right, if these guys hit, you're winning because of them. If some of these other guys hit, you're sort of winning you know, with them. What about the you, – you said if he sticks with Florida State. What Did you pick up any sort of – you know, buzz or any anything in terms of the way that these different recruitments are playing out with uh, some of these other guys? Yeah, I think most of these ones are pretty stable. Uh, you know, Tramel Jones just got off his visit from uh, from Florida State. He, he went in there and flew in. Uh, we were both at LAX uh, that night. And I know Florida's recruiting him really hard. There's a lot of his friends who are also going uh, to UF or likely going to UF. So we'll have to see if uh, just kind of what the best fit is there. Mm. Um, the rest of these, like I know UCF likes Camario Taylor a lot. I think based on his performance uh, in that seven on at, UC, at, at Elite 11, probably more teams will pick up on that. Malik Washington is not committed to Maryland yet, uh, but I think a lot of people think that that is uh, a likelihood and that would be a great get for the Terps. Uh, Luke Nichols said that Florida State's recruiting him. That's the Miami commit. KJ Lacey, I know uh, people are still kind of you know, monitoring situation there at Auburn. Auburn's also in on Juju Lewis, who's committed uh, to USC. Other than that, like most of these seem kind of squared away. Where's Juju from? Yeah, why wasn't Juju at the? No, he was. Okay. He, right. he was, yeah. He, he's kind of in that win with category, I think. Mm -hmm. um, he also reclassified, like he should be at 26, but he's at 25 now. Uh, historically, I know Andrew Ivins has done a lot of work on this for us. Um, that does not work out very often. Like mm. playing less high school football is generally not a good thing, unless you're like a lot older and probably should be in the class up anyway, physically. Uh, so we'll have to see how that works out. Yeah. Last week, USC, it was a little bit of a recruiting headline, lost a couple of defensive linemen from the state of Georgia. You know, they've done a good job of you know, getting talent from the Southeast. And now all of a sudden, uh, yeah. you know, that's, um, who else would be? I know, I know Juju Lewis is going to do uh, an official visit to Indiana or already has. Yep. Um, Colorado, Auburn as well. You think the Trojans are going to be able to keep them keep them on board? I, I think it's possible. Uh, it just kind of depends on you know, how much they want him and how, how much everybody else wants him too. Uh, yeah. But uh, you know, he's a you know, talented guy. You know, definitely has some polish to his game, and we'll just kind of see. Uh, definitely one to one to monitor. Um, oh, I thought uh, I thought Baker. Kid committed to North Carolina, 
has has some real arm juice there, Chip. So nice. that, that's that's encouraging. Yeah, I mean, you know, anything Sorry. to keep the throw party for four thousand yards as the Tar Heels go eight and five. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna light it up. You're never gonna see Keenan Stadium rock like when they're beating Miami, and you're never gonna see despair like when Georgia Tech beats them. <laughs> Mac Brown one and three against Georgia Tech since returning to. Uh, He's, it's like uh bees sting. Yeah, Georgia Tech, Virginia, and Florida State. That's the that's the the, tri the trinity of pain for North Carolina football right now.